Hi everybody, Andy here. I wanted to like help some friends out, so I'm making this video to help people out with this. The bane of everybody's existence, the dreaded Allen set screw. Stripped, jammed, frozen, jacked up. I fix a lot of machines with these on the road. I don't have access to like all the sh tools I have in the shop, so I this is the stuff I bring with me on the road to deal with these buggers. Make your life easier if you get uh, you get up to speed on this. I got some tricks that are pretty nice for you. First trick I want to give you is, okay, stop trying to deal with them with these Allen wrenches. Switch and use T-handles. T-handles some, have some serious advantage in that you can put the T-handle in the hole here, I've drawn a picture. You can put the T-handle in a hole and tip it sideways. And put, like, side lateral pressure on it. And then still twist it like that. Or twist it like that. And get a... You can... Once you have it in there, you have it tipped at an angle. You could rotate it or twist. Where the handle... There's two different motions. Here's a twist. That's twisting it. That puts your energy into it in a straight line with the axis that you want the screw to unscrew. You can tip it sideways and kind of hook it and pull it around like that using leverage. With a stripped out hole, that's an incredibly handy trick. So switch to using T-handles. The other thing is if you look close, the T-handles get rounded edges right here. All, all Allen wrenches do as you wear them out. With a T-handle, you can take that on a grinder and grind it straight back and leave a flat edge there. And don't put it on the wire wheel. Leave the sharp corners on there, and the sharp corners will dig in at the bottom of the hole. See, when it was beveled, you didn't grab here we're going to grab a little bit further down, like right next to here, instead of up here because of your uh, rounded edges on your Allen wrench. We're going to grab all the way down here with sharp corners that you just ground onto your T-handle. And when you're in that situation, you're going to grab the T-handle like this, and instead of twisting it, you're going to Bend it sideways and rotate it around. A lot of times that'll get it. There's a couple other tricks that are worth mentioning because they work really bitchin' too. This is lapping compound. It's basically aluminum oxide filings in like a paste form. You take that stuff, you get some of it on a little screwdriver tip, You stick it down in the hole. And you kind of got to work it down into the bottom of the hole. You don't want to leave a bunch of this stuff in your threads that you're coming out. You get it into the bottom of the hole a pretty good amount. Right? So now you have a puddle of lapping compound in your hole. Then you take your Allen wrench and wiggle it down that stripped hole. And dude, let me tell you, that right there will grip a set screw that's stripped out unbelievably tight. It's like, if you twin twist it, it's like solidly attached to the T-handle, right? That's like, it's like glued on there. Think of it like liquid sandpaper. You put some liquid sandpaper on the bottom of the hole, wiggle, push, press that sucker in there. It's stuck in there with like a sandpaper gasket right down the sides. So here's your Allen wrench in there. And it's now got a cushion 
of sandpaper, liquid sandpaper. It's mud, iron fi or aluminum oxide mud. That grips the inside of a set screw really awesome. Um, definitely worthy of being in your toolkit. They have these in little toothpaste tubes. You could get at any auto parts store. AutoZone, Napa, any auto parts store has lapping compound. Regular valve lapping compound. It will solve a lot of problems. Now, if you once you break this loose, you probably want to shoot, you know, once you've got it wiggling back and forth, you probably want to shoot it with ah, some air and maybe some brake cleaner to get the sand out of your hole. Because that was a bad, you know, having sand in the thread isn't to help. We need the lapping compound sand in the head of the set screw. Now, the other option is a Torx socket. A lot of, most of your sizes have a corresponding Torx socket that can be pounded into the hole. Now that little torque socket, who cares about it? You can buy them so cheap it's not even funny. Now once you're set up like this, again, a T-handle. If you wanted to pound it in like this, you could pound here with your hammer, boom, 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 and knock that in there until it was jammed in there. So if you had a set screw that was like rounded to death, that's when you pound this sucker in there like that, and then use the T-handle and put a rotational force on it, you can pull it out that way. That's a really good trick. Really, really awesome trick. I've pulled out hundreds using that method. Uh, it's a big time helper. Then there's other issues like, there's like brutal tricks that you could do. Another really good trick is if you have a set screw on a shaft and it's just been over tightened and you still have good grip on it but you can't bust it loose you take a punch a flat headed punch and come down and hit down here and smack the set screw pretty good with a semi heavy blow not like super hard but a, a really firm shot and what you're doing you come in here and you hit it in a straight angle Ker, ker smack nice and straight ker smack and what you're doing is you're the set screw's hard so it's going to dent the shaft that it's in there but it's going to happen like a shock wave that passes through the bolt without the bolt actually screwing down any tighter so the shock wave passes through and creates a little space there a little less tension on it because it's dented the steel of the shaft this gives you just enough of a free freeness on here because the threads were wedged the screw came down the set screw came down and was wedged between this part and there right so when you dent this you get some slack on the threads and that'll help break the threads loose a lot that's that's another one of my favorite tricks um, pulling set screws off of shafts um, can be a major pain in the butt. Um, there's two different styles of set screw. One has a pointy head and one has a flat head. Um, the pointy head is supposed to go into like a, a, a shaft directly. The flattened head is supposed to go in on like a set screw kind of application. Or not a set screw, but a uh, woodruff key where it's got a square keyway. Like on a motor, you'll have... Uh, a keyway cut into the shaft with a quarter right so that one would normally get a set screw with an end like that whereas a shaft itself would get a pointy one okay smacking it there on a pointy shaft will like save you so much grief because you put a little dent in here and now you have no more pressure on your threads and you can unscrew it perfectly these things are awesome. They're a welded T-handle. They have them in quarter and half inch. 
get some T-handles, guys. These are nice because you can smack them on the head right there. These are nice because there's no slop in them. It's one, it's a one-piece unit. So you have far greater feel with this T-handle. Um, this giving you the ability to smack it cleanly um, on a straight line with the appropriate amount of extensions. Um, that's a beautiful thing. These things are also pretty handy. Um, it has a... It has a hex drive for that. Instead of using that socket, it just goes directly in there. So anyway, we covered... Uh, those are the basics of my tricks for... Uh, recessed set screw where the set screw is way below the surface you're dealing with when you're at the surface there's some other tricks where you can do and you can if it's stripped out you can repeen the top and get an edge of usable material out here that you can pound the torque screw in so if you come around and abuse this edge down with like hitting at like that angle all the way around you can create new a new six side pocket to pound your torque screw in um, these tricks have made my life so much simpler don't get me wrong I love Allen wrenches they're great when I'm in a pinch boy howdy T handles are just so superior um, between the fact that they can be ground you can use them as like a twisting lever um, you you're putting direct rotational force around the on the axis that the bolt actually screws in and out um, this is just better than that hands down not to mention they're faster if you're disassembling a machine with 20 Allen screws on it. Um, if you're using these, you're wasting your time. These things, they're faster than an Allen wrench and a screw gun. They're just handier, better all the way around. Anyway, that, that pretty much wraps it up. Between those techniques of using the lapping compound, keeping that around and filling up the hole, um, which is a, a like star spangled trick right there. Um, Switching to the T-handles, grinding T-handles, um, using your punch, being smart about what you're dealing with and understanding the mechanics of what's going on. Um, that's why they pay me the big bucks is these things don't stump me very often. And really, those are the tricks that'll take those things out in the field without a bunch of hoo-ha and a bunch of extra trips. No, no. My whole pack that I take on the road is, is T-handles, some of those, that's it. And I, I deal with the majority of jacked up set screws. With that stuff right there and the hammer that's always in my kit, I got it covered. Um, you could do other stuff with um, easy outs and stuff like that. Um, I don't really go... Um, most of them don't get past the uh, lapping compound trick. Usually I would go first with with the Allen wrench. 90% uh, of everything comes out with the Allen wrench. The last step on the Allen wrench is the lapping compound. If that doesn't do it, then I get out my hammer and start smacking shit. Um, first thing I smack in is that. And then the next thing I do is I, I roll the edge over to get some more meat on there. Um, a lot of the places I work, I don't have the option of using uh, the heat wrench. So I got to do all this stuff cold. This um, cold stuff is, you know, uh, it's nice to be able to do everything cold. Um, torch is nice. I, around the shop, I, I, I love the heat wrench, but... I don't have that luxury in the field, so I handle most all of these 
but that basic stuff right there it's, it's not much and boy will it carry the day anyway thanks for watching this is andy video number something or other um if you like hit like share subscribe all that stuff um thanks for coming